curious about her type 2 diabetes. Are we able to do a body scan and ask if it's the spleen or if it's pressure on her shins? It seems like it's pressure. So are we able to release uh, all of the pressure in her bones so there is no highly pressurized bones in her system? We want her skeletal system to be um, all moving and in balance and harmony and doing their workloads that they need. Uh, we want to release any pressure on her spine um, so there is no highly pressurized bones in her spine or in her shins. Um, and we want her to be able to notice that she has profound balance in her body um, with her skeletal system. Yes, I just finished scanning and we released the pressure. How will she notice after the session the changes that will occur? It won't take as much effort to keep better posture while standing or sitting. That will be a, a big cue for her. Fantastic. And in terms of the diabetes, uh, will that be balanced? Or can you tell me about how she will experience that after the session? She needs to monitor her, her blood sugar more closely and watch it change to normal. And the best time to check that is like an hour after eating. And she will, she will see it returning to normal um, range within the next week. Fantastic. And so what was the purpose of her having to experience having type 2 diabetes? Her first child was a premature child. And it was a difficult birth for her body. It had to be taken to cesarean. Um, and then when she got pregnant the second time with that experience still heavy on her heart, she was afraid of how, what the outcome would be with the second child. And she put a lot of pressure, which was absorbed apparently in these areas into her bones. She put a lot of pressure on herself and it collected there. Oh, I see. What was the purpose of her struggle um, with the first pregnancy and birth? Did she really need to have a cesarean? The baby was in distress. The placenta was deteriorating. So the doctors did an emergency cesarean to save the baby's life. Oh, I see. Um, the purpose of that was she needed support from a lot of people around her to get through this. And that was one of the times in her life that we tried to wake her up about depending on people around her. It, that was the second time in her life that happened. The tell other one was a car accident. Oh, a car accident. Okay, tell me more about the purpose of that. She broke her arm and her foot on the same side of her body, her left side. And um, she couldn't walk. She had a cast with pins sticking out. And then her arm was in a cast, so she couldn't do much with just one arm. She was so dependent on people at that time. I think she's had to learn this lesson a couple of times. It's not the first or the second time. We've had three major times she's had to depend on others. Has she learned that lesson now? Yes, she has learned that lesson with her last medical journey. Okay. Open up, receive the help, accept it. Mm. And so she was saying to me that everything was happening on the left side of her body. Why is that the case? Your heart's on the left side. You learn to love with your heart. She needs to think with her heart and give back. So there's reminders there. 
it's not a very strong sign. But she'll pick up on that, especially with the latest one where she had the breast cancer on the left side. That's very close to the heart. And she needs to be more sensitive, more emotional. And I think she's learned to do both of those. Oh, she was wondering if she should tap into more emotions because she was feeling like she doesn't buy into any of the drama of the emotions. That's why she came here. And from what she was before, even though she doesn't remember entirely, it was a strong being that had more logic than emotion. And it was hard to grasp for that being, how to use these emotions. So it's just so much easier to ignore them or, you know, brush them to the side. Mm. That's what's happened. But they still need to experience. And that's why it's been in her face lately. Yeah, well, makes perfect sense when you explain it. So thank you, Hi Self. We really appreciate all of this. Is there um, any other thing that we can do for her body to help her? Yeah, she still needs to exercise more. That's going to help lessen the pressures and release some tensions that have... Uh, kept them in place. I know that she went through a lot of uh, medications that made her super tired, but as each day goes on, that's gonna get better. And she has been doing more and more, but now she really needs to start strengthening the muscles that support the skeletal system. And that will help tremendously. Uh, would you recommend her watching some YouTube videos on yoga or stretching or something? If she starts with that, it needs to be a low impact yoga. Yeah. 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 I feel like there's a lot of free yoga, low impact stuff online that is waiting for everyone to embrace. Yes, you're correct. And she, she will listen to this and take the advice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's so incredible the purposes and um, the lessons that our bodies are trying to tell us through these uh, in quotation marks diseases and illnesses. It just seems like it would be really helpful for so many people to understand and, and learn um, about this. I think diabetes is such a huge, huge issue for humanity, including heart disease and so much it's just it's such a shame that people are not guided to learn the purpose of these issues and, and not succumb to the medical industry so much of those are silent until they get worse like the heart you might notice that you know, you're short of breath or you get tired too easily and then you go to the doctor. Everybody goes to the doctor. Um, the heart can be many things. The outside influences like smoking or poor eating habits, they emphasize on what's wrong with your heart, but they weren't the main cause. The main cause was, was, it, was a trauma you're holding on to. Mm -hmm. And if it was released a long time ago in their lives, the other factors would have not been as harmful. And it's the same with the diabetes. You become overweight because when you get diabetes, you crave sugar like an alcoholic craves a drink. And that just compounds your problem. But if you were taking care of what caused the diabetes in the first place, which was, again, something you held on to that you're not even aware of, you're, you're always told to be that strong person, get over it. If it was a love lost, you're always told that there's other fish in the sea. It affects you so profoundly 
And then when you bury it, you get sick. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it is all about pushing and addressing all the feelings and honoring all the feelings and lessons. So thank you so much for that insight. I really, really appreciate the reminder. And is there, yes. <laughs> just off the, um, just off on the ch off chance that uh, we could do something today to be able to release the trauma from everyone. <laughs> How would we go about that? Higher vibrations. I know that everybody in, in your group or the group, group I feel has been working on their inner self and many are accomplishing goals they've set. They just need to keep reaching for the next stepping stone. Don't stand on one stair too long. Keep going. They're doing wonderful. Um, unfortunately, releasing things, it's a very personal journey that each individual has to accomplish for themselves. So the only advice, like I said, is keep going. Don't stand on one stair too long. Don't look into the abyss too long. Recognize it, address it, love it, release it. And then the next one will come to you, sometimes as a trigger, sometimes as a memory. It's never ending, unfortunately, because you've lived, you've lived so many traumas. You live so many experiences. Some were great. The ones that weren't are the ones that stick. Indeed, absolutely. And so, uh, it does seem like when we do more of our own inner work, life does get easier, um, even though there's still lots of traumas there. Um, processing them and releasing them seems to be with much ease and grace when we don't buy into the re-experiencing the emotions from it, trusting that it's all purposeful and great experiences. Um, it just seems that humanity is still stuck in fear and, and grieving from the injustices of their lives and others. The fear and the distractions that the society place in front of us is what keeps us, because when we're focused on the outside, it's hard to see the inside. And to yourself from the outer world practice. And whether that be a friend that is too needy and you have to you know talk to them so many hours a day or your children and that is understandable a lot of children are dependent on you because of their age so as a mother it would be harder for you to do your inner work and I commend the ones that do get it done absolutely yeah it's our own responsibilities to, to make our lives more balanced and functioning um, without being triggered into 3D too deeply. So thank you. Thank you very much. We were wondering about your advice. Uh, there are some people still super impatient uh, with the shift and with life in general. Um, what do you want to repeat and give them information uh, to be able to process being impatient and overcoming that? It might be a harsh analogy, but let's say a person didn't do all their inner work. That would be almost like a person that's unkept. Would you want that person in your house? So when you go to New Earth, you want the shiny ones. You want the ones that did their inner work. You, you don't want to be delayed getting there. So the time you have here the extra time you have here, use it wisely. Use it to clean out your closets and do not focus on the shift, focus on you. And then when the time comes, you are definitely ready and you have, you have nothing to hold you back. 
Yeah, it does seem like um, people who are impatient aren't living in the moment and appreciating the experiences they have right in front of them. Right. They are triggered by little things. They are dwelling on the past, but they're not cleaning up the past. They're not facing it you know, straight away. They're just letting that thought consume them instead of releasing it, loving it and releasing it. And that's a big part of your inner work. You have to recognize it, observe it. If you need to feel the emotions again, that's great. Have a good cry and then let it go. Love it and let it go. Mm. It seems like whether people want to choose to be in fear or choose to be impatient or choose uh, some other frustration it kind of seems to be distracting them from truly doing their inner work and being in with in a peace. Um, and it seems that inner peace is what everyone truly is striving for. So to have impatience, to have uh, frustrations, to have anger or resentment or self-sabotage, that seems like such hard work when we're all wanting to have a very balanced um, approach to life. They've lost their their um, self love. The, the gauge has gone a little bit too far, and they need to learn to appreciate themselves. These might be people pleasers, even that take care of others more than they do themselves, and then they find they might be a little behind. And so they just want to jump forward so fast and that makes them impatient. Are they exhausted from looking after everyone else and distracting themselves from their own inner work that when it comes to doing their own inner work, they have no energy for themselves? That is one of them, but there is another that they don't feel deserving either. And so they ignore their inner work. Mm -hmm. And they need, they need to understand that every single soul is so loved. It's so needed. Mm, yeah. They are not left out of that group at all. They, they need to look at themselves and know that they're loved and they need to love themselves. Once they do that, they can do their inner work way easier. It will not be hard. Yeah, it's that self-empowerment. So many people don't realize that it's their responsibility to empower self and to, to be able to work on their own individual journey. Um, it just seems like there's some... Some, some trip up on self-empowerment. They become bullies. They, they went a little too far. And then they have a little shame that they have to deal with. And that sets them back as well. Mm -hmm. That does not sound like fun. extra work <laughs> All extra work. well i think everyone's so exhausted who wants to have a extra work placed on themselves it's too it's too draining well when you empower yourself the ego likes to ride along with you and that's where the possible bullying comes from and um, it infringes on other people's rights and then the ones that are con conscious of what they've done they don't know how to correct it, so they just feel the shame and the guilt. And then they have to clean out that closet. Mm. Yes, interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's really interesting how people choose their path and direction um, when it just seems like so much extra hard work. But I understand that it's all purposeful because there's so many lessons that are being taught and experienced when you are going in different paths. Yes, all the experiences are very purposeful. Um, they all go back to source. They can be used by other beings to learn. You've learned them. They will be with you forever. As you go on your journeys through your other lives, you will be able to implement the lessons and share them with other creations. Mm. and be that co-creator and make things 
smooth is really not the word, but more beautiful for that society that you're working with because you had the experiences and you know, you know, it works. I hear many people saying about how we are the co-creators of this, of our own universe. And people then sort of take that step one bit more further and say, well, you know, I choose to have new earth here now. I choose to be in the fifth dimension because I'm a co-creator. And I keep thinking, I just don't think that's how things work. Well, remember the word co you're not alone creating. So they can't control it all. They are working with others. It's a collective. And there are other planets that need to be shined, polished, created, that they may possibly one day co-create, but it will be with others. Not one soul can delay The movement of the shift. There are situations that will delay it, but one person can't wish it away. That that cannot happen. I think they just don't understand what the new earth concept actually is, and they know it's a very trendy statement to say about being in 5D, and new earth is, um, is just a mindset because so many influencers are saying that the shift to 5D is just a mindset. And it's not a physical shift and that the 5D dimension is just here, but with a bigger, better perspective and, and not buying into their lower emotions. So I can see that a lot of people are believing that and responding as if that's the case. 5D is only the beginning. People will be, humanity, if they can experience 9D, that would blow their minds. So don't, don't limit yourself saying, I'm going to transform to 5D. Always have that bigger goal. Always do your inner work. You have to grow to reach every, we'll call it level, even though it's really not that. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I understand. Thank you so much. Um, we were wondering if, you could tell us please um uh what was actually behind uh david bowie's death was he killed or was it something else he had information because he was offered to join a secret club and his music started to reflect exposing the dark side of life that he did not want any part of. And so, yes, he was eliminated. So his truth would not come out. Um, how was he eliminated? Feels like he was poisoned, like a slow poison to where it would be undetected. Oh, goodness. Okay. So he was- Something that might damaged his heart. Okay. And he was not part of any crimes against humanity? He was tempted, but no, he was not. Okay. Well, we, uh, we love him for that. <laughs> uh, so does he have a message for humanity? When I see him, I see him in checkers, and I don't know what that re represents. But he loved sharing his music. Um, he wants to come through stronger one day, but he doesn't feel like right now is the time. Hmm. Okay. Well, we send him love and gratitude and trust that the checkers he's in is about um, the balance between, in quotation marks, black and white. And that's the color they are. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, adore you, David. Just absolutely adore you. But... Um, we will talk another time, so thank you so much. Um, in terms of the evergreen ship, uh, we keep hearing people saying that there was humans found in those, uh, 
cargo shipping containers. Uh, we've asked before what was in those on that ship and you advised us it was weapons, but was there anything else? Is this ship and was this ship carrying human trafficking? I don't see humans in containers. I see a lot of workers on the boat mm -hmm. that were trying to secure certain areas. And so for the people who are claiming that um, there was human trafficking, what is their agenda or intentions? The disinformation is sometimes placed out there to solidify other lies. It keeps people in fear. The people in fear, they don't use it for the betterment. They could use it to be watchful. They can use their fear to fight harder, but instead they just like curl up and hide. And that's what most fear-based stories want humanity to do, nothing. So has that boat ever been part of human trafficking? Oh, it's been to a lot of ports. It's very possible, but not this last voyage, no. Mm -hmm. Thank you, okay. And so do you get a sense of what other lies we've been told to, to buy into for fear? Well, the biggest one that you've lived is the pandemic that spread across the world. Um, there's less and less information that will be given out. The story will eventually die and the lie will die along with it. Mm. Will there be other um things in the media that will grab people's attentions for the purpose of being in fear? People are going to be in fear when natural disasters start to happen. There won't be man-made. Even the men that love to create fear will be in fear themselves. Mm. Are you able to clarify a question about Jellystone Park. Um, someone's asked me about this location. Is anything going to happen to it? Yellowstone is a big caldera and west of there going into Idaho is an even bigger caldera. And it, they're connected in little ways. If one would affect the other, and there's been a lot of activity, small tremors in Yellowstone. It's monitored so closely. And um, that would be the biggest upset the world would notice if, if Yellowstone were to actually erupt into a volcano because it would ignite the one that goes west of it. And so that would be a double whammy. As we know, to, um, we have been told that some people it will look like they have died from natural disasters when they merely have just shifted. Um, I'm assuming this is still going to be the case. There'll be a lot of people taken, rescued, we'll call it, from certain areas. And it it will look like they died, but they were actually saved. Some will choose to stay and experience the natural disasters. That was their contracts. Um, the percent of that is very low, 2% that stay. Most, most everybody will be taken into a ship. And if the ships aren't ready to transport them, they will just stay there and live their lives until 
everybody else shifts. Thank you. And those people that want to experience these natural disasters, um, would they be then, when they have experienced that, is that a possibility that they can still go to New Earth or have they chosen a different uh, location, potentially going the back? Ones, the ones that stay behind and die and use that as their exit, they don't go to New Earth. It would be just like all the others that chose to exit through a death here now. And they, they either go back to source or they go through their retraining, I'll call it, for the next their next journeys. Mm. Thank you. Um, I have heard that um, in many sessions in the past and so just to clarify for anyone who's listening new um if you did in quotation marks experience a natural disaster um for the purpose of being shifted to new earth um you wouldn't actually experience say the trauma associated with that natural disaster because it seems i mean i guess some people want to experience it but it seems like traumatizing people's exit Points, even though it's not an exit point, it is shifting off planet. The memory of it, um, you will not experience the the flood, the earthquake, the volcano, for example. Is that my guess? My question is so difficult for you to answer because I'm assuming everyone's um, experiences, what they want to experience, will be different. But will the majority not experience any trauma associated with shifting off this planet to go to new Earth? They want to, the ones that are shifting to exit to experience the disaster, they'll have their trauma, but that's what they want it to bring to source is that experience. The ones that are removed to save, they'll, they'll have the knowledge of why they were removed. And that can present itself as a trauma because it's uh, to them unnatural and out of the norm. But they, that would be so easy to get past after, you know, an explanation is given or they accept and understand. Does that answer your question? It does. And I'm sorry for the poorly worded question. It well, that's fine. A good answer. And for the people who know about this shift, we're assuming this when they release any worry and fear and go with with it without resistance, this will be the most easiest way for them to process the shift and experience it. They're dancing a jig. They're so happy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Anyone's backup dancer if anyone requests a <laughs> David Bowie's playing music. <laughs> Oh, let it be today. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, thank you so much. Now, a random question because I know that um, this person does not know this, this situation at all. Um, so this is why I'm asking the subconscious, so they're the higher self about this. Um, uh, is the man with the surname Durham still alive? Is this the man that was conducting investigations? Yes. For some department in the United States. Correct. Is his name Douglas Durham? I have no idea. I am simply asking because someone else has asked me and I am asking for a friend. The name Durham is coming forward. I'm not getting his first name clear. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't look dead at all. He looks like he's in hiding. And um, protection, I guess, is a better way to put it. Apparently, people are waiting for a report from him. Uh, what 
can you tell us about that? Would that come out publicly? I don't think that report will surface. No. Okay. And he's just happy to be alive. Goodness. Okay. Is there anything else you can sense about that? You may never see him in the public eye again. And the report will be forgotten and not mentioned. Somebody very bold had to come forward to dig it back up and surface it again. I see. Okay. Thank you. Um, people are also wondering if Donald Trump will be in a position of power again for humanity. He's never left that power. He is working behind the scenes diligently. Um, he's a beacon of light. He needed some rest after he left office. It took its toll on him, but he's never stopped working towards a solution for humanity. Um, before that's accomplished, he may be telling his tale somewhere else. Hmm. What is his solution for humanity? Being transparent. He thinks that people should know what's going on. Once things are exposed and you can't hide the dirty little deeds, the dirty little deeds stopped, they stop. So transparency is what he's always tried to bring forth. Mm. And do you get a sense that transparency will be disclosed? He's tried several times and sometimes he was stopped on a galactical level because it wasn't, the timing wasn't right. And other times he would just have so much coming at him, his timing wasn't right. A lot of people put obstacles in front of him to prevent him from exposing a lot of truths. He never spoke so many of his truths. Even though in his speeches, he was always very forward with his language and his words. He never brought up the subjects that he truly wanted to talk about. And one day, I think he already regrets that. He might not be able to correct that while he's here. I don't see him doing that, no. It seems like there is a recurring theme when we have been doing recent sessions uh, with um, other people. Um, we talked to um, um, Lincoln, who said that we must speak our truth and we shouldn't be afraid of sharing our truth. Um, how should everyone um, interpret that? And what is, uh, how can we as small individuals that we feel that we are, how can we share our truths to be able to get um, awareness out for transparency? It starts with being truthful and honoring yourself. Be the change you want to see. If you want to see honor in speaking the truth, of course you have to do that in your daily life. Um, you have to be graceful with it. Harshness will not get you anywhere. So it's, it's a tightrope. It's a walk that's a very thin line because people still live with your rights end or another one begins. And sometimes they don't want to hear your truth. It starts in little groups. People share their ideas, their knowledge. And as they add members to their group, of course, that grows. And then they have more people. 
So I guess a group setting is the best way to grow speaking your truth. Mm. I guess if you can respect your own truth and share your opinions without trying to force others to to agree with you, you just are confident that this is your truth and and you're just sharing it um, because you're comfortable with your own truth and it doesn't matter. We shouldn't be triggered if our truth is someone is not someone else's. Correct. Because my reality may be different from your reality. Well, I know for sure your reality is my <laughs> because you're an advanced higher being and I'm just in a monkey suit being in 3D. Um, so I, I do um, understand and respect your reality and always am very curious about uh, your perspective of humanity and how we are going because you, I feel like you've got all the answers and we are trying to uh, squeeze as much information out of you as possible. <laughs> that being said, trust your intuition and know that they will always give you the truth. So, true. so when, when you speak your truth, be holding the hand of your higher self, listening to your intuition. Mm. Well, and I just got called out by um, uh, the Lincoln um, because I didn't know history. I did never really resonated with the information of history. I avoided it like the Black Plague, which I don't have any uh, understanding of any of the actual situations that happened with the Black Plague or the time frame. But um, I am quite happy to say I was focused on other things that gave me more passion. So for the people who, um, it seems like a lot of people don't want to embrace the history of certain things, whereas others do, and I, I respect that because you know we're all very curious. But um, it seems very interesting uh, that many people um, have not been drawn to research or... There's a lot of things to learn from past events, but always remember it was his story, not your story. So history, is his story. You can learn what he went through and maybe even have sympathy or passion for that time. Mm. But it is in the past and you cannot change it. True. It's just strange because I don't, I've never had a passion or urge or desire to go and learn. So I do feel a bit ill-equipped to be able to represent these people who want to come into sessions in the best way. So I have no problems and fully admit that I am quite ignorant to history um, because I chose something different uh, to marinate my time with and focus on. Um, so in saying that, why is it significant? Why does it seem to be a common theme that when we tap into people, uh, I'm able to tap into their consciousness and, and, and also their higher self and subconscious. I think it's confusing people why when I um, when we have, say, Lincoln come in for a session, uh, he's there with his ego and his common his uh, consciousness. It seems that it's a strange um, approach uh, and people are still confused about the sessions. Can you tell us explain the purpose when of you call when you call in a person by their name that they live by that's what you'll get is their conscious and their ego um their higher self does join sometimes to intervene to make sure that that truth is being shed light on so people learn from the lesson and not distort what the situation was. Um, it is very interesting that the conscious can be absorbed into you and learn from you as well as you learn from them. I don't know if this has ever been done before, but somehow how you're mastering it. So interesting. 
Thank you. It's always nice to be able to get a sense of the person because they are, are so they're so human. It's so interesting to feel their energy and their perspective, their drive, their passion. I don't think anyone would be able to really master um, describing their lives and their motivations uh, in a quick hour. Um, so I always worry that they are not being fully represented in all their choice and triggers and everything. But it seems... I love them that have visited you were bewildered and the wonderment of it all distracted them from the full purpose of what you wanted to experience yourself with them through questioning. Um, I don't want to encourage a second session with some of them, but if you thought you could learn more, that would be advised. Mm. Well, I feel like it's nice to just remember that they were uh, one individual person with a legacy. And if their legacy is not quite 100% accurate because of the history written about them, I feel they want to get their, their messages and accuracy out for full transparency. Um, I find it incredibly interesting. Um, and I, I love that I'm learning so much myself through those sessions. So I hope that people can understand um, it better um, for what it's supposed to teach us. Maybe a suggestion when you know that you're talking to their conscious mind, ask them to set aside the ego so you can get the truth. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because we all assume that we're doing the best and we are good people um, who, if you knew that maybe you were more not so, yeah, the ego, the ego will protect our dignity and uh, pride. So, and I'm assuming though, the people who are listening and knowing, hmm, this is ego speaking and they're not wanting to be honest to themselves, let alone to us. It is so interesting. I think this is when the subconscious and higher self kick in and explain things as well. But I mean, it's all, you know, uh, it's good lessons for people who are listening to be able to ascertain, is this someone's ego speaking from their conscious perspective? Um, yeah, there's so much. I love, it just reminds me of our beautiful Erica who refers to the sessions as lessons. And we need to see everything as um, a lesson for us to learn and grow from and empower our own intuition with. So I definitely really appreciate yeah, when you get a When you get a touch of the ego is when they are trying to set the record straight, preserve their integrity, tell their side of the story that's all ego based um when the higher self kicks in they're more straight and to the point this is how it happened that's one way that you can definitely discern those two approaches i don't know how everyone interprets and understands the sessions and i hope it gives this has given them more clarification um, I find, I found getting a sense to know them personally was, is really remarkable. Um, and they always seem to have incredible insight to their perspective on life. I mean, they have to summarize it, but anyway, it's very, very intriguing. Sorry, I'm totally off topic. Okay. So thank you so much, so Ohio South for giving us that information. Um, I'm very curious about um, the person that we call as Princess Diana. I'm very curious to find out how many children did she give birth to? Three. She had two boys and a daughter. Mm. And the daughter was last. Mm -hmm. And the daughter is still alive and safe. Nice. And that's all she wants to know. That's all she wants us to know right now. Thank you so much. Keep her safe. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And huh, I oh, one last question before we depart. Um, 
is there um, is there a realm uh, where we can take our clients to temple healing rooms and a university hospital? No. They are full of positive energy, but they don't heal. They give inspiration and hope. And so uh, what dimension or plane is these places? If they're here on earth, which that's what I'm feeling, they're still 3D. Hmm. Out of this atmosphere is when you ex start to experience, totally experience different higher dimensions. You may get glimpses of 5, definitely 4D here. A little bit of 5D. Once you leave this planet and its negative pull, you can experience higher dimensions. That's why a lot of the ships that are around this planet and this solar system, they don't come to the surface. They don't want the 3D experience. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I was just trying to figure out um, more information about someone trying to I feel like there's trickery involved and it's a, it's a product they're trying to sell yeah that's all it is and people buy products from the tv the internet groups leaders all the time it's just a product they're trying to sell is it to help anyone truly with their spirituality or is it just gimmicky some people do get triggered and they eventually follow their own path because once you awaken spiritually, you don't need an outside person to guide you. Love it. A hundred percent. Love it. Love it. Love it. Is there any final messages that you have for humanity today? Yes. Keep your focus on your well-being. You're the most important thing in your life right now. You cannot help others without you being in a beautiful state of serenity and well-being. And that can be accomplished by everyone. I know that 3D situations arise, but don't let them consume too much of your time. Everything can be handled swiftly and with love. And then you'll be back on your focus of your your own inner love and you can share that with others absolutely absolutely yeah um staying neutral keeping positive respecting everything as a lesson and a purpose to grow and an opportunity to expand your consciousness yes love to all <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much love to you and thank you for loving and supporting us always.